There we go. Robin. Hello, all my little Tuesday Trojans. I hope you're all well. Happy New Year, bushy tailed and ready to go for another year. I hope it's a bit better than the last one, but never mind. I think many of us were glad to say goodbye to 2019, do you reckon? So let's enter this one with hope and optimism and may we prove to be right. So we had nice domestic quiet downtime over the holiday and uh, a little time to catch up, watch movies and sit here and shout at each other and all the things the families do, you know. So uh, with the Christmas tree decorations down yesterday and the lights all put away in the attic for another year, or I hope they will be by the end of today, in the garage right now, just resting. And uh, clear out the dust bunnies and off we go again. So today we have got the great pleasure of our guest Italian chef Nando De Stefano. Well, he runs three wonderful places in our area. I mean, you're so unlucky if you don't live around here, but you could always move. And they're called the Good Pizza. But he not only makes pizza, but he has a wonderful selection of all kinds of great foods. And uh, they're all made on the spot. All the sauces made from scratch and wonderful dishes. And uh, in fact, I might have to go there for lunch today when we finish talking. So come on, Nando. Yay! Nando's in the house. Nando, the yeah. yeah. I'm going to bring you. you. Hello, darling. Hello, Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. Oh. Good to see you. Happy yeah. New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Too. Yeah. So, so are, it was, was a good year, good yes, start for you? Uh, yeah, good start so far. It's only the seventh today. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep them. Many more meals at your restaurant. Thank you. Probably be yeah, okay. No, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll so I know Ruth is going to muscle in today because she's. I am. I'm going to go grab myself. Absolutely. Uh, Hi, Ruth. Happy New Year. Hi. Happy New Year to, to you see too. You. Ciao. Ciao. You bet. Thank you, thank you for having me here. Oh my oh, God. Yeah, it's, a it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, if uh, Playa del Rey folks are watching, which they tend to do, they'll, they'll know you and they'll know your restaurants. But how, how on earth did you, where, where from Italy, where do you come and how did you get here? And tell us that whole story. Oh, it's a funny story. I, uh, I'm from Italy. I'm from Napoli, yeah. the southern part of Italy. And uh, I um, arrived in the United States in 20 years ago, actually. Oh, really? Yes. yes. This year will be 20 years. Yes. What made you make the move? Um, I was uh, in Italy. I had, uh, um, you know, one little bar. It was called mm -hmm. uh, Viva Mancina, which is still open as of today. Oh, really? In Verona, in Verona. Yeah. Um, and I um, was tired of Italy. And at that time, there was a little turmoil, political turmoil and yeah. stuff like that. So I said, you know, let's pack the bag and move <laughs> If it's political term, or you want to come to America. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anywhere know. in the world. Yeah, sure. From one to another. Yeah. But anyhow, I uh, arrived in New York and uh, with no English uh, vocabulary whatsoever. Wow. Zero. And it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Probably it is. Just the same. Yes, it is. <laughs> so in New York, I, you know, with uh, having... Uh, Without having any knowledge of the English language, I was limited to do any job. So yeah. basically, my first job was fun. I uh, started to work in this place run by Indians uh, from India, in, uh, actually on 34th and 5th Avenue. It was a pizza right across the street from the Empire State Building. And I went there and I, you know, basically I had to explain with writing and things that I was looking for a job. <laughs> and they said, uh, I said, they asked me, what do you ask? I know how to make pizzas. And they put me on a trial and uh, they said, no, you don't know how to make pizza. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> what do you have? What job do you have for me? He says, oh, you can be our cleaning guys. I said, okay, oh, give me a job. Me. And I started to clean toilets over there. And uh, it was, this was the year 2000. <laughs> and, you know, I was like yeah. making like uh, uh, nothing. I think New York at that time was like six dollars an hour or something. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even care about it because... My uh, uh, my uh, you know uh, daily payment at the hotel at the, how do you call it the uh, hostel yes. hostel was twenty two dollars a day. Oh. So I basically was living in a bunk bed, and I was the only one that was stable there for twenty two days. The other people were in and out from Japan, Malaysia, Argentina, Japan, oh. from everywhere. Right. Yeah. And then I was calling my friend, my dear friend uh, in Italy, uh, Manuela, Manuela, and I was telling Manuela, I'm coming home. I said, I can't be here. <laughs> can't it's do crazy. It. She says, no, you cannot come back. You know that. You cannot come back. 
I said, okay, let me, let me put my thinking cap. So I went to, down to uh, uh, Little Italy. Uh -huh. I said, well, at least someone speaks Italian. That's right. And I went to this place what called... What was your second clue, right? Yes. <laughs> and I went to the, this place yeah. called the, the Apple, the La Mela, uh, where I found these guys that uh, actually was from the same neighborhood that I'm in, in Napoli, but I never knew them, right. of course. And uh, they sent me to say, oh, you cannot be here. This is a dangerous place for you. Just special but everyone wants to get. And we're going to send you to Westchester County to this place uh, in Larchmont. And she said, Oh, you go there, you take the train, the 40 grand, 40 second grand train station, take the train, go to New Heaven. I said, Listen to me. Okay. And you look at me, I said, I just came off the boat. Yeah. You're telling me to go here, and then I don't even know what you're talking about. It. Yeah. This is like Jewish for me. It's yeah. like whatever other language. And so, uh, he drew the map for me to go to 42nd and exactly the train. So I went in there, I showed the people, I said, I gotta go here. <laughs> and so in my whatever, macaronic or whatever. <laughs> and so I went to this place, Mario Fava was the owner of this uh, restaurant in Larchmont called, uh, I forgot what it's called, I forgot it, 20 years ago. But anyhow, um, I was there and he said, uh, you know, he knew that I didn't speak English, but he gave me the job because I was, you know, referred by this guy. Mm -hmm. It's your minimum, that's what he's called, uh, Uncle Dominic. So, and he said, <laughs> he gave me the job as a boss. Was that Uncle Dominic? Yeah, it's Uncle Dominic. Oh, okay. and, uh, he said that, and then he said, uh, you know, he'd be a bus boy. And yeah. one of the funniest things, because I couldn't have any conversation with any of the guests, and the funny things was that I remember one of the lady was telling me, he says, uh, at that time, said, could you bring me, please, the cheese? Bring me the cheese. Yeah. That's what she said. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Yeah. Right. So I was so happy that I understood finally the word and I went by her and I brought her a chair. And all the, <laughs> all the people around the table were laughing yeah. and my co-workers were laughing. <laughs> and they said, what are you doing? She said, you ask me. I said, you ask me for this. She said, no, cheese. Oh, 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 that reminds me of a funny story that um, my late aunt, Angie's late sister, who was very deaf, and his um, Martin's stepfather, who was very German, were here for our wedding. And um, he was trying to speak English, and she was trying to hear him and understand his accent. And uh, so they were out on the, on the front driveway. We used to live over on Ringe, and they were out looking at the ocean, and the breeze got up. And Hans Dieter said in a very thick accent, Oh, tonight is a little chilly. There is a bit of a breeze. <laughs> and my auntie hears this, translates it through her deaf ears and his accent, and says, Oh no, chili's a bit spicy for me, but I do like a bit of cheese. <laughs> and <laughs> and both laughing, you know. Oh. Yeah. It yeah. is the same that happened to me. Cheese then. story. Yeah. But then, you know, you know, and then there was things that I never heard in my life. Like one of the things that, you know, like these people, you know, the, the, the guests would come in and they would order to the servers, viewers on the rock. Yes. Right yeah. now, I understand. Right. But at that time, for me, Jews on the rock could be anything. I never heard in my life. Jews on the rock? Right. I didn't know anything. Jewish. I mean, yeah. It was mind boggling for yeah. me, too. Yeah. And I say to myself, I said, oh, my God, I got to put, put myself. So I say to all my Italian co workers, because they wanted to go out with me. I was the fresh guy, the young guy over there. I say, the guy, you know what? I'm sorry if I do that to you, but I need to take a, a leave from you. I'm not, going to, I'm not going out with you anymore, Italian, because you all wanted to speak Italian. And I don't care. I need to learn English. This is for me. It's my survival. So I sp and, uh, for six months, they were mad at me, but for six months, I decided to go out only with the English-spoken people mm. and, uh, you know, and basically busting their chops and saying, like, repeat, 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 yeah. until I had the words. And I remember I was riding with my friend Mauro Nusco, which is in New York still, and... Uh, and I, and I was driving with him in the car, and he was, uh, uh, we were listening to the music in the radio, and I said to him, I said, you know what, I am going to promise myself that I know that I learn English when I understand what this guy is saying from the radio, because, yeah. you know, when you yeah. speak to someone live, you can understand, because you can basically read the radio, yes. 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 but from the radio, for me at that time, it was like, what the fuck are they saying? Especially if he was listening to a rap station. Right? <laughs> Sometimes, yes, I couldn't understand. And so, you know, I put myself into uh, fifth, fifth gear, a lot of speed, and I, you know, like eight, nine months later, I was able to start to have a conversation. So I went from bus boy to a server. I went to Zappi, signed up to make more money, and I stayed in New York until 2001, the end, after, you know, yeah. the right. big tragic 9 11 came, yes. and then in New York it became very depressing. 
I said, guys, I'm going to go check out California. I came to Los Angeles. I was here for five man. days. I loved it. Yeah. The weather, everything. Oh, I went back to New York. Say thank you very much. See you guys. <laughs> and moved to Los Angeles. Yeah. And yeah, I started to work, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a server in some of the restaurants in Beverly Hills, uh, right. Pago, and then uh, Prego, and Oteca Drago, Cafe Veneto. Oh, great. And then I made my career also yeah. yes. there as a chef too. I started to work in the kitchen, which for me it was the background that I had in Italy because I did the culinary school in Napoli for five years, and um, and I worked in restaurants in uh, Malaga, Marseille. Oh. Uh, Biarritz, uh, Sevilla, Austria, and Vienna, and then Italy in uh, between uh, Bologna, Brescia, and Verona. Of um, course, also with my chefs, you know, in the summertime when there was the break, the chef, uh, the chefs that were my teacher at school, they would take us, some of the guys to work with them in oh, restaurants. So yeah, was never, wow. never, never, never. Never was left out of the kitchen. At there's that a real, time. there's a real camaraderie, isn't there? It's almost like I've worked on film crews for many mm -hmm. years in production, and it's it's a brother and, and now, thank heaven, sisterhood. Once you've worked on a in culinary and in on a kitchen team or whatever, it's, there's no feeling like it really. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. I mean, what you're saying is true, and it's mm -hmm. a great feeling because you know you spend the, the majority of time with people. Yes. You know, they're in the kitchen over there with you for like. Yeah sometimes 10, 11 hours a day. Yeah. Just, yeah. just you know, yeah. focusing and working and preparing and stuff like that. And, you know, you better love these people. <laughs> because yeah, right. Yeah. You become well, a family, only better. Oh, they become a family. I mean, it's like when you were going to school, elementary school, and you spend six, seven hours with the teacher, yes. she becomes your second mom. And yeah. You have good memories and stuff. But also in a, in a, you know, with a family, obviously, people are going in different directions all the time. But, um, in a kitchen situation, it's you've got fire, you've got flame, you've got boiling water, you've got sharp knives, you've got stress, you've got complaining customers, you've got people who don't show up for their shifts. So if you really can bond and, and learn to love those people under those circumstances, yes. oh, it's an amazing thing. It is also because, you know, it's as you said, it's a very risky environment. Yep. Oh, yes. And you've got to be able to trust the people you work with and they need to be able to trust you because Anything can happen at any given time. Do you remember that Chinese restaurant we were in in London? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were in Soho in London. Yeah. In the 70s it was, we heard this blood curdling scream, yeah, yelling, yeah. fighting, screaming going on in the kitchen. The kitchen we yeah. had this blood curdling scream. I'm like, what on earth is going on? And just as we ducked, these two guys came running through the restaurant. One of them had a meat cleaver. He was oh, chasing wow. the other guy with it. Yeah. I was like, oh boy, take that out in the street, guys. We don't want the blood in the kitchen. No blood in the well, kitchen, please. Yeah. In all these years I've been in the kitchen, I've had a couple of episodes like that. Oh, that yeah. happens, and, you know, fights, and like, you try to put them, you know, the fire out right away yeah. before it gets escalated mm -hmm. to the worst yeah. things. But it does happen. People sometimes they take it outside in the back in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's go outside. Okay. You're and, you know, some, the book, so, sometimes, you know, I think that one of the books for the restaurants is amazing to write. Yeah. You just being seized in the back of the house, in the front of the house, yeah, whatever right. with the customers sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, right. I, Sorry, I've imagine had, the staff boiled over. <laughs> I've had my stranger requests in, uh, you know, uh, I never had it anywhere in the world as in here in Los Angeles. I mean, uh, some, some, <laughs> I some, 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 when I remember when I was working in Beverly Hills, some of the lady would come there and say, uh, you know, hey, the fish is too fishy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you, didn't know, you didn't order a steak. It's a yeah. fish. Of course, it's, and this is a mima. It's also a strong plate. It's a fish. Yes. It's not That's a, right. And you know, another, I remember this episode, this lady uh, called one of the servers and says, oh, this and she was all like uh, an, an anxious. And she said, ah, I need to have another table cloth. So I said, well, what, 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 I mean, everything is cool. It's clean. Things is something else. Said, oh, I have my nephew sleeping under the table in the air condition. It's cold. I wanted to call him. Oh. <laughs> like, okay, why don't you be your oh, pizza no. outside, maybe oh, home or whatever. Goodness. Chuck E. Cheese. Was, uh, speaking of fish, we, I was out at a sushi place in the valley in the 80s with a girlfriend of mine who shall remain nameless, but she was from a little town called Toad Suck Ferry in Arkansas. <laughs> and it's literally a ferry that you have to put your bicycle and your shopping and your car and, you know, you go across and there's a, there's a ferry man and there's like eight houses on this yeah, little yeah. island in the middle of the river. And so when she arrived in Los Angeles, everything, it was like that Schwarzenegger movie, you know, he's coming down the elevator. Oh boy, what, you know, what, what is it all? 
and we were at the sushi place, Terry Sushi on Ventura Boulevard, and she ordered, she said, I'll, I'll have the omakase platter. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So the omakase platter comes, and um, she puts it in her mouth, she spits it out, she's like, oh my God, this is undercooked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we were like, uh -huh, would you like that medium well? That sushi had to make that, it in Arkansas. What about yeah. that time in Chicago with the iced tea? Oh, yeah, so we were flying back, we lived in Nashville for a while, and we were flying LA Nashville and Nashville had an ice storm so they routed us through Chicago and gave us an overnight hotel voucher and a meal voucher to spend at one of the lovely restaurants in one of these lovely airport hotels and there was a girl flying back to Tennessee for the first it was her first flight she'd driven out here with a friend to help them move and she was flying for the first time she was terrified and she'd been in our row and I said to her well you know you're traveling by yourself do you want to come in eat with us she's like oh yeah i don't i don't mind where y'all going i said well the, the italian joint looks like the best choice you know because they they can't screw up pizza but you can screw up pizza <laughs> oh, yeah. anyway, anyway so we um martin and i get a couple of glasses of chianti and she says oh oh oh, oh i don't drink i'll have an asti so of course he brings her asti's for my <laughs> oh, asti. and she's like what's this i don't drink i'm, I'm a southern baptist and he said you order the iced tea? And she said, yeah, I ordered the iced tea. She was going to get an iced tea. And he's, I, we just sat back and watched it. It was hilarious. Well, I just so, yeah. episodes all the time. Yeah. yeah. So how did you come to um, start the Good Pizzas? And how did they grow in the I Greece? started the Good Pizza in 2008. Um, I uh, um, had a friend of mine who was uh, uh, working with me in one of the restaurants in Beverly Hills. Carlos Alvarado, which is my uh, ex-partner, mm -hmm. we started together with the pizza in uh, Westchester. He found uh, this uh, place in Westchester where the original pizza Emerson? still is, uh, okay. 7929 Emerson Avenue right. uh, yeah, yeah. in right. Westchester, 90045. Yeah, yes. We were there, uh, actually it's, I was working in um, uh, Enoteca in Bravo and he told me, you know, there is this place, and I, also told, I always told him that I wanted to open a something on my own and a pizza because that was my background and stuff like that and he found this place he says you know it's not the um the, the, the like the, the optimal, best address the best no the best uh, situation because there was a lady at that time she was doing catering but she would close at 2 p.m and then oh. everything oh. from 2 p.m on was uh, uh like she well, was closed and she was paying the rent for the whole day but yeah. uh, catering at 2 p.m was not so there was a full kitchen fully equipped with oh. a pizza oven and everything yeah. but it was unused so we struck, I went with him, I said, listen, before you take me to location, show me the surrounding. Uh -huh. So he took me to Westchester. I didn't know Westchester at that time. Right. I'd never been to, I, yeah. I had never been to Westchester. So he took me to see all these, you know, streets full of houses left and right. And schools. And, and I said to him, yeah. I don't need to see anything anymore. Let's no, make a deal. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So Actually, we went to this lady, we made the deal with mm -hmm. Sublease. And see. we started with uh, very little money, me and Carlos, and you know, and well, that's how the good pizza was born in yeah. two thousand eight. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. from there, we started with a very small menu, and then has increased as you know as the years have gone by, has increased, and now we have an array of uh, different dishes, not oh, only yes. pizzas. That's what I want the people to know. Right. I know. Right. So it's great. unfortunately, I mean, we started as the good pizza because the idea was to make like you know pizza, great pizzas, but. Uh, you know, we have grown also the pasta. Into, the, yeah. into the kitchen as pastas and salads, some uh, great entrees. Well, my, favorite, so, my two favorites of yours are the osobuco uh -huh, and you. the chicken marsala. Chicken oh, marsala. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, this is what I would even imply in the van instead, where we have a little bigger restaurant, um, you know, more sit down and uh, mm. uh, nice wine list. Yeah, nice wine, yes. wine list. And, you know, cocktail for the happy hours. Wine and espresso for, for him. Espresso for Martin. That's right. So here we are a little more penalized because, uh, you know, uh, people, stealers of today, after seven years, eight uh -huh. years actually yeah. this year, um, there are uh, people that live in the community still think that we are just, just a pizza house. joint. Right. Yeah, and right. in fact, I'm still surprised there's a, you know, recently in December of 2019, a couple came in from Playa de Reyes. Oh, we were referred here by such and such, and they say that you have some good food. I said, please sit down, try. 
because we didn't know that you had this exquisite food. We were told that you were another, you know, yeah, the just same pizza joint. Pizza yes, joint. Exactly. So I just wanted the people from Playa del Rey or the surrounding community that they give pizza in Playa del Rey and in Winchester. It's not just about pizzas, yeah. but please try also our pastas, great salads, uh, and entrees. That, and well. special soups. Oh. Soups, yes. Soups. soups. Yeah. We are. We were featuring broccoli soup, minestrone, oh, and yeah. chicken oh, vegetables. Great. Soup. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love, know, the, I, love, I love the fact that, you know, obviously I was just sharing with Nando our 10,000 bites and all the crazy world chefs great, and everything. Great. And we, we hope one day you can be involved in one of them with us. We'd love Absolutely, to, that would be, uh, we'd be love my to honor. introduce you to David Skinner and honor. get you on Team 10,000. The chef, I'll be happy to meet, to meet you. But um, what I like about it is that, you know, Ange and I went the other night and we had, a, you know, an Aperol spritz and a sangria. This man makes the best sangria. And um, while we were getting our, that night we ordered pizza to go and there was a family sitting next to us and they were, you could order by the slice. Cool. And then there was a couple all dressed up at the, at the table by the, by the wall and she was having a glass of Prosecco and they'd ordered, uh, I think, spaghetti vongole and uh, he had ossobuco. So it's really, it's a trattoria, it's a pizza joint, it's a by the slice, it's, it's really Correct, cool. correct. Actually, it's a, you know, the restaurant in Playa del Rey, as we were talking to uh, one of my associates that we just hired, Sean Ryan, uh, you know, is a hybrid. It's a, when we uh, hire people that we, uh, you know, we tell them this is a three entities in one because we are, yeah. you know, delivery place, yep. um, uh, walking place because we sell by the slice so people come yep. in and go, oh, and then a sit down yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little difficult yeah. to uh, and catering. Uh, yeah. cater. We do yeah. catering, yes, especially yeah. with Easy Catering's company. We do a lot of catering also to private people. Mm -hmm. We have actually now one of our, you know, the lottery that we have right now with the scratch off with the, uh, our own internal lottery. Every time you make a purchase, we give you a, you know, a scratch off that, and one the grand prize is uh, to win a, um, a dinner with the chef. Basically, okay. I will oh. come personally to cook to the winner house for eight to ten people. There is a menu oh, that will be you choose idea. between us. There is a templates, mm -hmm. three templates menu, mm -hmm. and will be choose. You know, they will be That's chosen one. Idea. So I will go to the people house to mm -hmm. cook for them for the winners. There get is me a, a ticket. Oh, you, will, <laughs> you will get the sketch shop. <laughs> uh, so um, this is one of the promotions we are running right now, and um, you know I just want to emphasize that when the people come to the, the pizza and then me being from Italy, people you know compare their pizza, they make comments online says. Oh, but it's not New York style. It's not. We, 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 I want to just it's break Italian right now that I have the opportunity to say that. <laughs> exactly. We never started the good pizza with the intention to compare ourselves with the New York style pizza. By the way, I maybe be, and this one might sound like, but I'm maybe ignorant. I didn't even know what the New York style pizza was. In all honesty, I was born in Italy, raised in Italy. And the style that I grew up was the pizzas in Italy. Sure. I didn't even know they had the pizza in New York until I arrived. And, that, and, right then that, and then and that so the mess this, they call Chicago. This big pizza pie I never saw, in, never yeah, seen yeah. in my life until I arrived in New York. Yeah. Yeah. So we do a large pizza pie, as they say in the United States, but it's, you know, it's uh, an Italian style. I don't compare my pizza to New York, yeah. Chicago, Boston, no, LA. It's, it's the good pizza style. Yeah, it's That's it. So. Pizza. Please don't make comparison. Just no. you can only say I liked it. I didn't like it. Okay. Uh, and there is one thing that I would say for people that says, "Oh, the food is good. But the food is not good." There is no, for me, when they say the food is not good, I think I serve you something that is rotten, something that bad, and stuff like that. Because yeah. it's all better on you know on the taste buds. Yeah. We can go to the same dinner, all three of us, who yeah. sit down at the table, and we have the it's same the dishes, yeah. eat the same thing, mm -hmm. but you say, yeah, "Oh, yeah, mm, yeah. didn't like." Because your taste buds are different than mine. And I might say, wow, this is excellent. And yes. you say, oh, no, what are you talking about? Right. The, right. So right. it's not about, you know, it's good or not good. It's about, I like it, I don't yeah. like it. That's because right. The no, taste exactly. buds, this is what it is. Nice. And this is for all the restaurants, not only for me, because I think that every chef that goes into the kitchen goes with the intention to do the best job possible. Yes. We don't go into the kitchen in the morning and say, oh, let me see what I can screw up today. You know, yes. let me see. Exactly. Wow. I can make today yeah. so that people are going to talk bad about me. Yeah. Everyone goes in the kitchen with the with best intention, intention. Then there is the people that are a little more capable, people that are less capable, but no one is going there with the intention to say, no. Oh, I'm, I'm going to grab that. Hold on, see who that is. 
If it's George Clooney, tell him no. <laughs> Again. And stop calling me. It's Naomi Campbell. Please. It's probably Martin Scorsese going like, where is he going to be in The Irishman too? <laughs> <laughs> George Clooney, unless he's calling from um, Mumbai. Mumbai. Oh, Mumbai, yes. yes. indeed. Oh, I love those robo calls where they say, we're about to come and arrest you for, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruth has a friend who came up with a great idea when the phone rings, just when dinner's on the table, always. This guy answers it with saying, uh, hello, um, this is Officer Rodriguez. You're calling an active crime scene. How are you related to the victim? <laughs> <laughs> we have your number on file. You are now a person of interest. Thanks I for calling. <laughs> I have, a, I have, a, you know, I received this uh, robot call, you know, yeah. like bot yeah. call, bot calls. Yeah, you know, yeah, call. yeah it's not uh, Like you know, probably five, six times a day, oh, and know. they're yeah. funny because mm -hmm. some of them says. Uh, the, the gas company, oh, you know, we're going to come and shut down your... Give uh, us your Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> so I, I started to, one of them says, okay, um, you know, we're going to come. And I said, listen, hold on one second. I'm in my office. I'm in the office of my lawyer right now, and I'm a little confused and stuff. Can I give you my lawyer? And, uh, you know, uh, of and course, uh, they, uh, no, he got, but before he got, you said, and then yeah. Just F you to me. Yes. I said, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah I've had a bunch of those. And she's got a good one, too. What are you working? Oh! <laughs> she, gets all, she gets all sexy with them. She's like, ooh, oh, you, you sound nice. <laughs> I, I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm going to adopt that. <laughs> Well, if the answer comes back with this gorgeous accent, a chef's coat, you'll know who you wrote that number. I'm not going to call it. Maybe just keep that number. <laughs> so, how do you decide what um, what specials that you put on? Is it is it taste based, seasonal based, price based, a combination? Mm, it's a seasonal. Yeah. Seasonal, you know, based also on the weather. Uh -huh. so, you know, when winter time comes, you try uh, try tend to make like you know more earthy dishes, a right. uh, little so, more. So. Uh, oh, more a little heavy right. and uh, mm -hmm. like a uh, rich, you know, right. rich. Yeah. So just like osobuco, short ribs and mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes oh, and so nice pasta, <laughs> lasagna, for example, you know, mm -hmm. like pan parmigiana. Yes. During the summertime, instead, try to make a little more lighter mm. uh, dishes, you know, more towards uh, salads, uh, uh, fish, uh, uh, light entrees and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And pasta. For example, with light cherry tomatoes, very, very simple pasta, not like heavy and cream and right. stuff like that, rich mm -hmm. and cream. Mm -hmm. um, and the specials are made based on the requests on the guests. You know, yeah. We listen what the guest uh -huh. tells us. Yeah. Uh, some of the guests mm -hmm. that interact with us, they tell us, oh, you know, I was mm -hmm. there and I think this is a good dish. Mm -hmm. right. So we um, test in the, we tested uh, and taste in the kitchen. Oh. And then, you know, if something that we think it might go, we put it on the menu as a special. Mm -hmm. uh, we change the special, try to change the special once a month. Mm -hmm. So right now we're featuring um, a bucatini cacio e pepe. And which is a typical dish from uh, Roma, and uh, basically is you know bucatini pasta is like spaghetti, but there's a little hole in the middle. It's the sauce, exactly. Yeah, the sauce yes. through, and then the cacio pepe is very simple. It's a, it's called you know piatto dei poveri, which means uh, the poverty uh, plate. Uh, yeah. uh, poverty plates for like people that Pop. didn't have that much at that time. Yeah. So very simple. It's basically cacio cavallo, which is a typical cheese from the regione Lazio, Roma, where Roma is based. Uh, and uh, with the fresh ground pepper yeah. and there's no cream or so it's very simple because we use the water from the cooking of the pasta okay. to make this uh, little cream with the cacio cavallo the cheese, uh, sauce. The, the cheese yeah. sauce and then uh, when it comes out a little bit of salt and fresh ground pepper on top and it's served very simple, very simple but uh, very Some tasty of the best food is very simple but it's amazing how people want to overcomplicate oh. things I agree with you you know for example I was uh, in these days at home I was cooking at home and I just cooked something for me and my family and the kids. And I, for example, I did a dish with like I like this, which is my mom used to do for me. It's basically carrots, yeah, uh, just you know peeled, cut in uh, rounds, like okay. boil in the water for five six minutes so it become a little soft, and then I condiment it with salt, yeah, pepper, yeah, garlic, yeah, a little bit of lemon, fresh seasoning, mm -hmm. and red vinegar. Cold when you eat them like or room temperature, almost like a pickled carrot. Kind and of the filling yeah. is amazing. And I say this to my wife, I said, Why can I do these things at the restaurants and maybe try to see yeah. if people like? Or, yeah. you know, uh, I do 
broccoli, for example. Yeah. Broccoli is just cooked for about three minutes so they don't become too mushy. Yeah. And then, of course, you just, just salt, pepper, yeah. garlic, and yeah. fresh lemon juice. That's it. Yeah. And you eat them, and there's this flavor is so earthy and fresh, and you can taste everything. Mm -hmm. And it's, as you say, it's so simple, but yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. so well, good. The, with the carrot dish, with the red dish, it sounds like what they call a the quick pickle. Oh, that's problem. Right. I love mm, I yeah. love that dish. I can eat like a huge quantity. Amazing. Yeah. How we all hang on to stuff yeah. from our childhood. Yes. yes. That's great. Well, well you know, you've made me so hungry. I know. <laughs> we got to go eat now. <laughs> I, think we, uh, I think I know where we might be going to go. I think, for lunch. yes. Yes. So, so you have uh, three locations. Yes. Tell the folks before we the, go. The pizza in uh, Playa de Rey, Westchester, and Marina de Rey. Uh, Playa de Rey is our uh, flagship restaurant because it's the biggest one. And uh, please come and visit us. Um, Tell us about your story. We'll be very happy to have you as a guest. Find him on uh, Instagram. The yes, pizza. Instagram, The Good Pizza, or Facebook page, or yeah. to our website, yeah. www.thegoodpizza.com. I have to just say, if I may, mm -hmm. this wonderful gentleman donated tons of pizzas yes. when we had a charity event for the Fire Force Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. three different deliveries he sent to the event. Uh, of and he does that a lot, too. Hours, so. yes. no, no, we'll no, for yeah. the homeless in... Uh, uh, in uh, Venice. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it gives, yeah. gives, gives back yeah. a lot, but we hope our community comes and gives you back a yes. lot. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Yes. Happy New Year. Yes. Eat healthy. Yes. Eat with Nana. Thank, thank you. Me. Thank you. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. Ciao, kids. Bye. Ciao, Bella. Ciao. See you next week. <laughs> thank you. Ciao.